All right, so so much for these guys doing some nice fret work. I was sitting here with the Dremel polishing these frets, and one of them came completely off the fretboard. So let me show you how easy it is to pull one of these things off. So I just have it right by the corner over here. Watch this. As simple as that. They just come right out. And they're not even chipping uh, the fretboard at all. Look at that. Usually it's a little bit of a struggle to get these out. And you gotta go down the line with them. This is nothing. Comes right out. So much for doing a nice fret job. Well, at least now this is supposed to have a 12 inch radius. And uh, I can actually make sure that this is a actual 12 inch radius all the way down. So we'll fix that as well. All right, so I have to give my opinion, which, you know, in some cases really doesn't mean too much to people, but uh, on this thing here, after doing a lot of work on guitars and seeing a lot of different things that uh, I've seen as far as uh, even about brand new guitars and cheaper guitars that are brand new as well, I am not impressed with this. I am not impressed at all. To me, this is basically, um, glamoured Chinese crap and what I mean by the glamour part of it is the inlay work that is done on this body now it is all show okay they did do a fantastic job on the inlay work on the neck and on the body now going through it and kind of looking at it where the seams are and everything else where all the pieces on the body kind of fit together and stuff um, 
they did a great job. I mean, it, it came out really, really good. On the neck portion it as well, they really fit these pieces, even though on the neck they're even smaller than what's on the body, they made it work and they made it fit. And the inlay work that is on the neck is pretty deep. I mean, it, they did some carving over here. It's not like they just kind of, uh, you know, got some real thin shit and just, you know, started cutting away at it with scissors. They had to do, you know, some jigsawing and everything else to really kind of uh, get the detail that they got on this. And how do I know how thick the inlays were? Well, when the frets popped out, which was pretty easy and I showed you that, uh, you can actually see how deep the inlays go in there. And they go in there pretty deep. Now, the one thing that is kind of nice about having to pluck the frets on this was that I was able to kind of concentrate a little bit on the fretboard itself. Now, I don't know if you remember it, and I don't know how well the video is showing this, but the inlays themselves have uh, had like a dried look to them, okay? Like, like they were uh, not really a gloss finish, but had a matte finish to it. And that's due to the, the sanding of, you know, getting the radius of the fretboard and scarring or scratching the top surfaces of the inlays themselves, making them kind of dull looking and not really pop. Well, I grabbed my 12 inch radius block and started off with a uh, 320 grit sandpaper and kind of went over there to make sure that this thing was radiused. Now, I did notice that there were some areas of the inlay where you can kind of feel, especially like right here on this circle, this circle wasn't radiused at all. It kind of had a, you could feel the, the edges on the side of it, which, you know, tells me that, you know, they really didn't take their time and kind of like do a nice job. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but all in all, it wasn't something that I couldn't fix myself. So after using the 320 grit sandpaper to make sure that this had a 12 inch radius all the way down, uh, I switched it up to a 400 grit sandpaper after that. And I noticed that the inlay started to kind of, my sweaty hands, inlay started kind of to have a little bit of a gloss to it. Then I switched it over to a 800 grit sandpaper and then to a 1500 grit. That gave the inlay on the neck a little bit of a gloss to it. So it does have a little bit of reflection in it now, as you can see. And it's not due to the oil that's on the fretboard because I really didn't put too much oil on it and nothing is oily. Right now my hands are sweaty from working on this thing and that's kind of what's getting all over this thing. But I figured I would start doing something else like you know, putting the electronics in instead, I had to mess with the fretboard. I started doing the polishing of the frets that were on there because they seemed to be pretty good as far as being leveled with each other. Um, the ends were kind of nice. They weren't uh, uh, really sharp. And if they were, had a little bit of a burr on it or something like that, I think the polishing wheel from the Dremel would have took care of that as well. They weren't bad at all. Um, I started getting to like this point over here and one of the frets came off. It just started lifting and just flew off onto the side over here. So I was like, okay, let's take a look at this. So I got the fret puller and from top to bottom just started plucking frets out of it like it was nothing. They came out really, really easy and that shouldn't be. Now I used the Stumac uh, fret slot cleaning tools to see if maybe, um, you know, are they going to wiggle inside the slot or the slot's going to be that wide to where uh, that's why the frets came out? You know, did they use some type of a saw on this thing that uh, was wider than the tang on the fret? No, the Stumac tools I used to clean out the fret slots, one of them is a, has got teeth on it like a saw. You've got uh, one direction from... Uh, teeth and you got another direction for teeth and works really good with when you have binding on the body and then I have a hook that's made by Stumac that's for cleaning out the inside and getting all the crap inside the slots out they fit nice inside there they weren't loose and wiggly and everything else so it's either the type of fret that they used because these frets here, after I got the the radius of the fret going and started cutting them and putting them in place, um, they didn't just fall right in. 
you know, I had to apply some pressure with the uh, clamp on there to get them to go in. So these should be nice and secure now. They're nice and even, they're leveled. And uh, I did a polishing on them, but I didn't do a polishing with the chrome polish. I polished them out with the 1500 grit sandpaper and that was it, well, the fret erasers. And I left them at that. So they'd still have a little bit of a haze look to them, not like Cadillac, you know, old chrome Cadillac bumper style. So, and they, but they feel nice and smooth. So they're not going to go anywhere. Nothing's really going to happen to them if I leave them this way. And that's the way I want to leave them just for the, a nostalgic look to this. The rest of the hardware is going to be um, a gold. So I didn't want to have really too much of a bling as far as the frets popping out and being really, really shiny. I wanted the, the neck to kind of pop out a little bit more than, than the frets themselves. So basically, I am not impressed with this. And once I start putting in the electronics, I want to see what else I'm going to end up finding as far as wrong with this thing. Um, I did have to drill out the holes in the body for the new for new pots, which I'm going with the CTS and a CTS push and pull, which the push and pull will be on the tone. These are 500 Ks. Um, uh, uh, da, 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 volume ones um audio tapers i like the audio tapers because they just don't cut out at a certain point um they seem to have a nice slope to them uh they're nice and smooth as the more you turn them it, it just has a nice smooth slope from point a to point b point b being louder to point a being quieter even on the tone control and there's like there, we just had a discussion about this. There is an argument about, you know, which ones are the best and stuff. But I have found that a lot of guitars have both audio uh, pots inside them instead of going with the linear ones. Some guitars have both. Some guitars have one or the other or, you know, both. So what can I say? I kind of like to have them both be the same. Anyways, that's it. I'm done for right now. It, it's pushing... Shit, it's pushing 12 o'clock at night. So I've been down here for a while, kind of putzing around on here and uh, doing a little bit of work, stopping, doing a little bit of work, stopping. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this right now. The next thing I'm waiting for is, you know, basically putting this thing together and having it fold in half. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and complain to the seller that, you know, your, your product is crap. You know, I'm not going to complain to him about it. I'm not looking for anything in return. Like I said, I picked up the guitar for $380 US off of eBay. Uh, they had like 400 and some odd dollars, uh, almost 500 bucks on it when I purchased this. But it also had the let's make a deal button as an option on eBay. So I was able to put in my own amount and see what the seller either okays it, denies it, whatever. Um or declines it so yeah um now they're winning like 500 bucks for these. so i'm going to tell you guys right now after what i've seen and what i've already been playing with this is not a 500 hundred dollar guitar okay you want a 500 hundred dollar guitar go buy an epiphone don't buy one of these um unless you plan on doing the work yourself or plan on putting work or more money into it so that's it for now. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And uh, I have a Kramer to work on tomorrow. Yeah.